Mortal Online 2 is an open world sandbox PvP MMO developed by Starvolt. The game is super realistic, immersive and has so much depth, but because of this it's really punishing and really complex. The game is left open, you can be whoever you want to be, go on whatever journey you want to be and play the game however you want, but there's no quests and no explanations outside of a very short tutorial. It's easy to get lost, confused and give up along the way. So I wanted to make this video just to break down some really important things and questions that new players might have. I want to pack this with as much information as possible. So if you're really new and you watch this all the way through, there might be things that still seem confusing. But if you just come back later when you have another question or when you've learned a bit more about the game, you might have a specific thing you want to look back on again. I'll timestamp everything so you can jump around. But let's get straight into it. It's going to have some really deep things and then some tips and tricks. So first off, the most important thing when you're a new player is the character creator. So let's go through this first. The character creator is great, but there's a lot to it. There's no classes in Mortal Online 2. You just put points into what you want to put points into and choose what path to take. You can be a pure specific build, a pure mage or pure archer, or you can hybrid and do bits of everything. But there's one thing that is really important here and it can't be changed later on, and that's your race. Races give you something called clade points, which are basically your talent tree, and every race is completely different. There's passives in here like plus three strength and intelligence, and then there's like active abilities such as increase your armor or increase your defensives. So it's important to try and work out what you want to be before you pick your race. If you wanted to be a definitely sure you want to be a mage, there's certain races that serve that better. If you're certain you want to be a big armor, two-hander, you know, tanky character, there's certain races that will give you better clade points for that. You don't want to get hours into the game, days into the game and go, why are my clade points not really giving me strength when that's what you're looking for? So uh, there's builds out there and I'll link some things down below, which are really good build guides. Uh, keeping it simple, humans are pretty jack of all. They have pretty good things all together. They give you plus 50 of certain stats. They they make pretty good mages. Alvarins make really good archers and mages because they've got clades that help that. Ogmir have really, really good uh, defensives, so they work great as physical melee characters. But uh, I'll put some, some guides down below. A guy who's really good at making builds if you want to sort of like work your build out first. But just look through the clade points. If you're looking through a clade and you're like, oh, there's an archery thing there, there's an archery thing there, there's an archery thing there, that might make a good archer. So it's worth looking before you decide what race you want to be. Then onto the stats. In the character creator, you choose things such as height, weight, age, and things like that. These determine your max attributes. So the number on the left in the attribute column is your current stat, not important at all. The one on the right in the brackets, that is your maximum stat. I wish I knew this when I made my first character. So if you pick a tiny little skinny elf, you will have a tiny max strength. So try and play with this and make something that fits your build. You can honestly change this as well in game. You can um, you can take points out of one by hitting the minus and put them into another by putting the plus. So the number on the left is completely irrelevant. Lots of people, even in the starting area, will go all in on max their strength or max their intelligence so they can read faster. And then when they get to the mainland, they'll actually pick up the stats they want. So make sure the one on the right is what you want. Um, keeping it simple, strength is your damage. So it's also a requirement for bows. You need a lot of strength to hold the big bows so if you're looking to be an archer or a, a melee character you need to have high strength alvarin also have clades that reduce the strength requirement uh, dexterity goes into your speed uh, constitution is your health intelligence is your magic damage and also reading speed psyche is your total mana and mana resistance there's more to it than that and you can hover over for the tooltip once you've got your character made you go to haven haven is the starter zone for new players so let's talk all about haven PvP is off, it's a pretty small zone compared to the real world, and the enemies are weaker. As a new player, you can leave Haven once you have two clay points, which is your level basically. Once you are level two, you can leave. I would recommend you spend more time here. The game lets you leave by going down to the fishing village, and you can take three gold and the items you got equipped with you. But I would say stay. Once you leave, you are easy pickings for everybody in the game. You, you, you are... <laughs> open PvP is out. There, you think it's safe in the real world, it ain't. You go out to mine, you can get killed. You go travel from one town to the next, you get killed. You buy your first horse, you lose it 10 minutes later. The real world is brutal. And if you can't defend yourself and you are still learning the basics, it can feel rougher. You could say, oh, I just want to go make a bit of money. I just want to level my clay a little bit. Every Everything you do, you're going to be looking over your shoulder because it's open PvP. So I would say just take it easy there. Take it easy in Haven, level up, read some books and level your skills. If you're doing archery, get your skill up. Get it to the point where you're doing a lot of damage with your bow. If you're uh, a mage, get it so that you've got all the basic magic skills down and you can hit enemies with magic and actually do damage. The first time I left Haven was as a level two mage and my magic did less than my dagger that I had. So I got destroyed once I left. I still get destroyed now. 
I would just say, leave when you feel comfortable. If you're going into the bandit dungeon and clearing the dungeon, no problem, or you're a tamer and you've got two wolves and you feel strong and you can headshot people, you're good. It's good to go. The only th reason not to stay in Haven is that you can't make gold. If you're itching to make gold and you just, you just really want that real experience, then leave. There's no problem leaving. I would just say, don't feel like you need to. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you can probably achieve things faster in Haven because of the safety of Haven. Okay, that's, that's Haven covered. My, my tips for Haven. Skill points. Uh, let's, let's, this, this, is, this is a big one. The game lets you have 1,100 action skill points and 1,100 profession skill points. These are completely separate systems and points spent in one are separate, points spent in the other, and they can't be transferred. Every time you level up a primary skill, this uses one point. So if you take a primary skill to 60, that's 60 points out of your 1,100. Secondary skills don't cost any points. So also don't worry about messing these up. Skills can be leveled and they can be deleveled freely. Just click to remove a skill from something you want to change. So you can just press like remove one level and it will go right back down. So you level something to 100 and go, I actually hate archery. Level it back down to zero if you want and you get all those points back. You can also lock a skill if you don't want it to keep increasing. Let's say you spend a lot of time uh, blocking attacks, but you don't want to level your blocking skill because you're, I don't know, you're a mage and you don't want that skill. You can lock it so it never levels up. So you don't have to keep deleveling it. So you really can manipulate these skills as much as you want. Now, some skills are already unlocked at the start of the game, but there are some, some are grayed out. And there are three ways that you, you can unlock a skill. One is just to do the thing. So as soon as you start sprinting, that levels sprinting for the first time. As soon as you start magic, that starts unlocking some of the magic skills, things like that. Um, the other way is in Haven. There are trainers all around the market square kind of area. And if you talk to them, they'll start giving you stuff. Go over to the profession trainer and say, I want to learn about shield crafting and they'll give you a few points in shield crafting. That's another way to get some quick and easy skills. You can go out to the stable and talk to the tamer person there and they'll give you a quick few levels in taming. So you can start taming horses in the real world, things like that. And the other way to level a skill and unlock a skill is uh, books. Books are a huge way. As soon as you read a book for the first time, it will unlock that skill and let you level it. Another thing is <laughs> skills are in a tree. So if you see a little plus and it goes down and it like dips out, like indents into the next one, that's like a progression tree. So if it sits on, if a skill sits under another thing, it needs, you need to learn the skill at the top first before you can go down. It's kind of like a, a pyramid. You got, you got to work your way down the skill tree. And uh, if you level something that sits under something else, it'll level the thing above it. So it's like if you level the level the child, it'll level the parent kind of thing, which is, which is good because then sometimes you can bin off a basic skill book and the advanced skill book will level up the basic skill anyway. Moving on, something very similar and something that is going to help you with the skill tree so much is books. Books in Mortal Island 2 are used to unlock the skills and level the skills. Most books take your skill from level zero all the way to 70. They take real amounts of time to read and the time is based on your intelligence and your reading skill. Uh, mages will have high intelligence. You can put more into your intelligence in Haven to get these books read fast and then get rid of it afterwards and move it somewhere else by minus in intelligence and plus in something else. A, a tip for books is first go to the library. Libraries are in every single town and they're in Haven. Uh, they're, they're, for, for Haven, it's in the north of the north of the town in, in the north section. There's like a library. You'll see it's, you know, it's a library um, and get the reading book. The reading book will level up your reading skill. So max that book first, and then all of the books you read after that will be faster. The first time you put the reading book in, it will say like 99 hours. But as your reading skill improves from reading reading book, that time goes down and future books go down to the point where you can read a whole book in a day. So yeah, you get loads of books from the library in a city and you can pretty much build like probably 60, 70% of your build just from the books. You can learn crafting, combat, magic, creatures, materials, laws, everything. The more advanced books are then scattered around the world. For example, you need to travel south to like the Kurite towns for mounted archery and the advanced archery skills. You need to travel to the very south for more advanced things like taming books. Mages have like a... Mage books are kind of different because you've got to learn the spells and it's kind of rough. But yeah, some books even drop from dungeon bosses. Another tip is you can buy a book to unlock a skill and then once that skill's unlocked, you can put another book in. So say you want to level um, a certain magic ability you can unlock that magic skill, get rid of the book, and then just level that skill by doing magic yourself. So if you want to use like three books at once because you don't know what to do first, don't feel bad about just using the book to unlock the skill and then binning it off and replacing it with something more important. Okay, moving on from books, horses. You can't get horses in Haven, but as soon as you get to the mainland, you can start riding horses. There's multiple types of horses in the game. Some are faster, some have bigger load capacity, um, and horses have two main purposes. 
faster travel speed and carrying your stuff. The world is huge. I'm talking top to bottom of the map, hours to travel. The, the world is absolutely huge and being without a horse is is horrible. <laughs> it's really rough. To get a horse, you've got two options. You can go to the stable in your city and purchase one. Normally, they're around five gold, higher in other cities. If the city's got less people, it might be higher. Or you go out and tame one with the taming skill. Getting taming and getting to around level 30 is enough to tame a horse yourself. Um, you can find horses grazing all over the world. I'll link a map down below of where you can see the horse spawns. Um, and once you get a horse, you need to feed it, which you can find herbs. You can even feed it water. Just press P, open the window and give it food. Keeping its hunger down will increase its loyalty. You can equip it with bags and armor, which can either be crafted or purchased from the broker. And horses are so much more important than I realized when I start the game. The world is so big that the horse is like your lifeline. If you're miles from a town and your horse dies you're <laughs> and you're not a tamer, that's it. Good luck. You've got a long walk back with no way of escaping from enemies. So try and keep your horse alive. Look at it and bandage it. Use a bandage while looking at it to bandage it. Mages, learn to heal it. Tamers, you can recover a bit better because you can just find a new horse and tame it. Um, necromancers can even resurrect it as a risen horse. But overall, that, that's quite hard. Overall, look after your horse. In PvP, people will try and target your horse first because it's like taking out your legs. You, you can't get away. As soon as you've lost your horse, you're a sitting duck. They can then ride away on their horse, heal up and come back and get you again. Gold. Anything you do in the game can be made easier by gold. Mages need tons of regents just to cast their spells and some of them are super expensive. Melee foot soldiers need expensive armor and weapons. Any of the advanced skills for your class normally can be purchased on the broker for hundreds of gold. So I'd recommend finding a good way to make gold in the game, a consistent way to grind gold so that you're not trapped with no gold, no horse and a sitting duck. Some really good beginner tips I'll go through now of making gold are grind the graveyard. Every city has a graveyard, some of them protected, some not. Kill the zombies, harvest their stuff, bring a horse to carry more if you have one, and then go back to the vendor and vendor everything. Butcher the corpses and sell all of that as well. With a horse, you can make around eight gold by just killing all the zombies, putting all the stuff in your bags, butchering them and just filling the horse. That's like eight gold. Um, another way is mining. It's super boring, but if you can mine, you can sell all the ore and you have a small chance of getting rare gems, lodestones and geodes, which, um, which uh, mages really need for their elemental spells. You have to trade gems for your spells. So mining is super profitable. On the release of elementalism, these gems are going for like 50 plus gold. So is that, is that an exaggeration? They're going for like 30 still now. So yeah, these are mining is a really good way to make money, but there's a lot of people doing it. So I do expect the prices to come down a little bit. Um, grinding bandits is also huge. You can, once you feel a bit stronger, you can go from bandit camp to bandit camp uh, or go in the sewers and just beat the bandits, take their heads and you can earn good gold. It's easier if you're like a melee or an, an archer and you can, you've got good solo skills. Uh, you also have a chance to find spells on the bandit healers and the bandit casters, rings and amulets in the chest in the camps. So th there's, there's a good way to make a lot of money just going around grinding bandits, but it's high risk, higher risk than the zombies because they can actually, they actually do fight back and can take, take you out quite easy. Another good way to make money is uh, transferring stuff from one place to another. If you can successfully get around the map safely, there's money there. There are trainers that sell skill books down south of the map for like, I don't know, 50 gold. You can buy them bring them up north to like Tindrum or Fabinum and sell them for two, three times the price or just move items that are in high demand from one city to another where it's selling cheaper. The brokers in each city are locked to that city. So the the, the stuff on sale in one city is, is locked. You can click the little filter and see what's selling in other cities. If you see that down in Vada, uh, a certain resource is selling for one gold, but up in Tindrum, it's selling for seven gold because those creatures are down south near Vada. Go down to Vada, buy it all, bring it back up to Tindrum, easy money. But you've got to be able to travel safely and the, the world around you is not that safe. So <laughs> that's a, it, it, it's a good way to make money, but very risky. Um, as you progress, these beginner ways of making money, you can start making real professional money. You can hunt down difficult creatures and animals, level your butchery and sell the fur and scales and rare resources. Uh, you could work with your guild and farm the best dungeons for the rare skill books and rare items that could be sold on the market. There's hundreds of ways to make gold in Mortal Online 2. I wish I knew more and people won't tell you everything because the game is very secretive and they, they like the uh, the element of discovery. So get out there, explore, make friends and find these rare items and get past that gold barrier that will, will trap new players. 
Okay, now a quick thing on combat and PvP. You, there's like four ways of fighting in the game. Melee combat, archery, magic, and pets. They're, they've all got their own complexities, different pets, different magic, different blah, blah, blah. But try and specialize in one of those and get good at it. My advice is get good at one thing. Get good at, really get good at one thing. If you're a mage, learn those advanced spells. Learn how to manage your mana, what spells do, what's good for PvE, what's good for PvP. If, if you're melee and archery, learn your skills, read your books and practice. Do duels in the cities to get better. Try and pop good shots on your, on your, from horseback to get better archery. Tamers, learn your animal laws. Get really good at taming a certain animal and don't just carry a level five wolf around with you. T get good at level your animal skills, your taming, your creature control, and have like five wolves or a big bear. When it comes to PvP, set your expectations. All those things are out to get you. Getting attacked by a mage is very different to getting attacked, getting charged by a, a two-handed melee guy. Like, just be prepared and learn. Every time you die is a learning experience. And the way that PvP works is that you press N to turn on PvP mode and then you can attack other players. If you attack another player first, your name turns grey and you're then a criminal basically. Any guard that you see will attack you on site so you can't go into any cities. And any other player that attacks you can attack you free from punishment. So they can they can harm you and not get flagged as a as a criminal. So you're you're really in danger as soon as you attack another player for the first time. And because this is a full loop PvP game, if someone sees a grey, they'll quickly take you out to get all your stuff. So beware. Uh, but it does, you know, it goes off after like a couple of minutes. But then also every time you kill another player, you your reputation decreases with a major city that you're in. And once your reputation goes so low, you're an outlaw. You can't go into those cities. You'll be attacked on site as a hostile player. So you got to be very careful racking up those, those PvP kills as a new player like if you're a new player and you think oh it's easy i'll just go around and kill all the miners and take all their stuff or i'll go kill all the people fishing and take all their stuff you can but you'll quickly ruin your reputation in that town and be banished and as a new player being an outlaw probably isn't that great an experience if you don't quite know the game yet so be very careful with that okay so what do you actually do after haven you you, you finish the tutorial you finish the tutorial you leave haven there's no quests and you're stood there what do you do? What, what do you do in this sandbox open world MMO? <laughs> you go out and die, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, no, you <laughs> you will you will die a lot. Uh, I would say the world is your oyster. What do you what do you want from the game? Go do it. Do you want to be the best blacksmith in the game? Go learn mining. Go learn ore extraction. There's like extractors, crushers, furnaces, blast furnaces. Go learn what they all do. Read the books. Go read a book on the blast furnace. Go read a book on different types of ore. Go work out how granum is processed into blood ore. Go work out all the different things because it's not explained in the game and the people that learn it and the people that take time to master that skill make the money. So go go master a profession if you want. If you want to be the best archer in the world, get good. <laughs> learn the best archery skills. Get your books, get your archery skills up and just get good. Get good at riding archery. Get good at taking things out on the move. If you're a mage, like right now with elementalism, it's kind of like a pilgrimage across the map to get all the skills. Go start that pilgrimage. Go go to the three main towns and grind for all of the mage spells, the uh, elementalist spells. You want to be a necromancer. There's a necromancy dungeon somewhere in the world. Go work out where it is. Go work out how many people you'll need to go run that dungeon and how to get these necromancy spells. Try and find what you want from the world, work out how to get it and go on the adventure. If you're really lost, maybe just join a guild and take part in what they're doing. If the guild run content in certain areas, get involved with them. I wouldn't say jump straight into wars and PvP because you're going to be squishy, but that doesn't mean you can't start fighting and learning. And then decide, do you want to make friends or do you want to be an outlaw? You can make your reputation as a, as a good guy. You see somebody on the road, throw them a heel. You, see, you, you can duel with people in the city and get better and make friends. And then you see them out in different places and you know, there'll be a head nod of, you know, we trust each other. Make friends in the game. You could be a, a trusted scribe who will scribe the spells into people's books. You, you can get a really good reputation. This is a 2000 player server and it's all on one server. I have seen the same people I saw when I first started the game still to this day. Still see the same people in different places. So your reputation carries weight and you can be a well-known good character, a good person in this world and have respect for the players. Or you can be an outlaw. You can 
You can kill everyone you see and take what they want. You can kill so many people that you're banished from the cities and you have to live on the outskirts as a bandit. You can do what you want in this game, but what do you want? Find out what you want and go do it. The, the beauty of this, this game is you can be anything and do anything. But that's it for this video. I, I hope this has helped out. There's, there's quite a lot of... When I think of a beginner guide or what I wish I'd known as a new player, I probably asked a hundred questions. I, every single system is complicated. Nothing is explained and the whole game is confusing. So this could have been an hour long. This uh, I could have made a 20 minute one just on crafting. Uh, this, there's so much that they don't teach you, but I don't know what everybody wants to know. I don't know if my mistakes were everyone's mistakes. So I've tried to cover the main things that I think you need in the early game. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. If you think a follow-up video on advanced tips and mid-game sort of stuff is would be more helpful, let me know. I'm happy to work on that. I love the game. I play it all the time. And yeah, I, I, I want as many people that want to play the game but feel that it's too hard to ease them in more because the game is incredible, but it has the, the worst learning curve of any game. But that's it. I hope it helped. Take care, everybody. Subscribe for more MMO content. Like the video if it's helped you out. That helps me out. And uh, yeah, MMO Discord down below as well if anyone wants to hang out. But that's it. Take care. Catch you in the next one. Bye.